Hello, today I'm looking at Majima Khan number 89, which is the Dhammachatiya Sutta, which is translated as Monuments to the Dhamma. Now, I think mon monuments is used sort of metaphorically, and maybe, uh, I don't know, a different translation would be Testaments to the Dhamma. So the location is in the Sakyan country, at towns called Medulumpa and Nagaraka. And the people involved are King Pasanadi of Kosala, uh, his seen, uh, commander in chief of the armed forces, Digger Karayana, and uh, two of the king's inspectors, Isidata and Purana, and Buddha. Now the first couple of pages of this sutta detail King Pasanadi's uh, and King uh, Diga Kasayana in full pomp and ceremony progressing through the Sakyan country. And uh, when the king realises that Buddha is abiding close by, he orders his retinue to where the king, uh, where Buddha is abiding which is a town called Medalumpa. And after taking all his carriages and soldiers and so forth towards where Buddha was, the king completes his journey on foot and with full obeyances introduces himself to Buddha. I am King Pasanadi of Kosala. Buddha asks why he has come and shows such friendship. The king replies that his understanding, according to the Dhamma, Buddha, the Blessed One, is fully enlightened and his followers, the Sangha, practice in a good way. Please, please realise, Buddha, kings quarrel with kings, nobles with nobles, Brahmins with Brahmins, householders with householders, mothers with sons, brothers with brothers, friends with friends. But yet, here I see the bhikkhus, the monks, living in concord, in mutual appreciation, without dispute. And elsewhere I have seen recluses and brahmins who are lean and wretched. Surely they are living life in discontent. But when I ask them, they blame their wretchedness on family sickness. But here I see bhikkhus smiling and cheerful, sincerely joyful, their faculties fresh, living at ease, subsisting on what others give with a mind aloof as a wild deer. King Pasanadi continues, I have never seen an assembly of men so well disciplined. When the Buddha speaks, there is silence, everyone listens. Whereas I, uh, when I'm in council, despite my power of having people executed or exiled, I am constantly interrupted, even when I ask not to be interrupted. Then again, venerable sir, there are certain learned nobles who are clever and knowledge knowledgeable. They wander about demolishing the views of others with their sharp wits. And when they hear that Gautama, Buddha, is close by, they go to him, ask clever questions so that his doctrine can be refuted. But when they encounter the Blessed One, hear his Dhamma doctrine, these nobles, in actual fact, become his followers. And uh, this point is repeated about having the same effect when Brahmins and householders come to visit Buddha and discuss the Dharma. The king carries on. Even with recluses, they ask the Blessed One if they can go forth into homelessness with Buddha, who assents. Then these recluses realise they weren't really, really recluses or arahants, but now they are following the Blessed One's Dharma, they really have achieved arahantship or enlightenment. Again, Venerable Sir, I have two inspectors, Isidata and Purana. They eat my food, ride in carriages, <clears throat> and I 
uh, I bring them fame and success. Yet when I was living in cramped quarters leading my army, uh, I heard these two inspectors spending much of the night talking about the Dhamma. And when they lay down their heads, they lay down in the direction with their heads towards they had heard the Blessed One was staying, with their feet towards me. So in spite of my providing them a livelihood, they have less respect for me than the Blessed One. Also, the Blessed One is a noble, and I am a noble. <clears throat> the Blessed One is a Cossolan, and I am a Cossolan. The Blessed One is 80 years old, and I am 80 years old. I think it is proper to do such supreme honour to the Blessed One and show such friendship. And having said all this, the king rose to his feet, paid homage to the Blessed One and departed. As soon as King Pasanadi had left, Buddha addressed the assembled monks. Bhikkhus, this king uttered testaments to the Dharma. So Bhikkhu, Bhikkhus, learn these testaments, master these testaments, remember these testaments for they are beneficial and belong to the fundamentals of the holy life. This is what the Blessed One said, and the bhikkhus were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. And so ends Majjhimikaya number 89, the Dhamma Chittiya Sutta. Thanks for watching.